In the previous video, we have implemented the edit form. And when the user click on the submit button, we're supposed to handle the HTTP post request. So in this video, let's do that. As you know already, when the form is submitted, it's going to go to the categories controller and go to the edit action. So let's go to the controller. Currently, you can see that we already have a edit action under the categories controller. Will this edit action method actually handle that request? No. We need to have all of the fields posted back over here. So the edit action that we specified in the edit form here will have to be able to see the value of the name field and the value of the description field. So then what do we do when we already have a edit action method? We can create another edit method with the same name, a different signature. Here, we want to receive an instance of the category class. And we also need to specify with attribute that this particular action method handles a HTTP post request. We don't specify anything on the action method. The action method handles the HTTP get request. That's by default, so we can delete this. But, but here, because the HTML form uses the post method, we need another edit method and also the post request here. And when the form is submitted, the model binding will kick in and all of the fields in the form will be mapped to the properties instance of the category class here. Let's take a look at the category posture here. Here we have a update category method. We can use this method to help us to handle the request. So we're going to say categories repository, and then we're going to call the update category method. Here it receives two parameters. The first one is the ID of the category. So we're going to provide the ID of the category, which is category dot ID. And here the second one is just the category object. Direct the user to the categories index page. So this action. This action will go to the index view, which is going to display a list of categories. So for that, we can use a helper method, which is redirect to action. And here we can specify the action name without specifying the controller's name, which means that we are using the same controller. We can say name of index. So this will redirect to the same controller, which is the categories controller here and index action method, which is this one. So this is going to help us to display a list of categories. And that's what we want to do. Okay, let's set a breakpoint and then run the application with debug. Okay, now we're looking at the home page. Let's go to categories. Let's edit the first one and let's try to click on the save button, which submit the form. Hopefully it's going to trigger our HTTP post edit method. Okay, so our breakpoint is hit. That means our edit action method is created correctly so far. Now we have the category correctly model bound here. Well, there's only one problem. The category ID is zero. So when the category ID is zero, it won't be able to update the category because we need to use the category ID to locate the method. But if we run through this, we run into it, it will not throw any exception because the category to update is now. And then it will just redirect to the index view, which is the list of category right here. So in the next video, we will have to fix this problem where we don't see any ID of the category. Just to sum up what we learned in this video. So in this video, we learned to use HTTP post attribute to decorate an action method for handling form submissions. And here we use the model binding to receive data that is submitted through the edit form over here. And because the tag helpers that we used from the previous video, ASP.NET Core knows which field corresponds to which property in the category class. So therefore, this category object will be able to receive all of the information in the form. So that's everything I want to cover in this video. I will see you in the next one.